You're listening to the Impact Implosion on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. It is September 27th, 2015. It is another episode of the Impact Implosion. As always, I am Seth Traken, and on the other end is Mike Poland. Good evening, or good Monday morning to you whenever you listen. Yes, if you are in the UK, it is Monday morning, and right now, apparently, the moon's going bloodshot right now. According to some, it's, a, it's called an eclipse, folks. Yes. It's normal. Yes, it is. Well, not a, it's... Some people are calling it the apocalypse. It's the fourth blood moon on a Jewish holiday. We're all going to die. Yeah, we've been through that pretty much all this week, you know. know. And yet nothing has happened yet. Nope. I haven't heard anything. It's silent here. Oh, no, the Pope is here. We're going to (laughs) die. The Pope is in Philly. Uh, And he doesn't have the Pope feel. In Philadelphia, the town of brotherly love is which is a sarcasm because it's not brotherly love down there nope anyway speaking of things that we sort of love we TNA. have, a, we have stuff to talk about yeah yeah we have some uh news and the big news is that there will be a third commentator who will debut at bound for glory yes, so it's not going to be today or, always work it's going to be somebody new it's not going to be today or JB, and they haven't been told anyone yet. They oh my say, God! It's Kevin Kelly. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, Kevin Kelly wouldn't do it. Just like Dalton Dalton Castle wouldn't sign with TNA. They tried. Uh, <laughs> Kurt Angle is going to return to Dalton's action. Actually, I like Dalton Castle. Kurt Angle is going to return to action on October third, and he will be back for. Uh, You'll be Bound back for, for glory, which we talked Bound about last week. Yep. And Even though the, he should um, not TNA be wrestling. Will be a one night only in New Orleans at the end of October. Uh huh. He should not be back. And it's going to feature two cage matches, which will be Angle and Eric Young and Kong and Gail Kim. Yep. The Battle of New Orleans. So when are they going to do that Genesis show that was supposed to have Tommy Dreamer versus uh, somebody in a scaffold match? Hopefully never. <laughs> oh, it was Tommy? It was Al Snow. No, it was Al, Al Snow and uh, Jesse Goddard's his scaffold oh, match. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> yeah, they actually hyped Wait, that. Both up. of you jump off the scaffold. Nobody wants to see you anymore. Uh, yeah. What about what? What about Raven and Simon Diamond? <laughs> Simon Diamond and Jay Bradley, whoever it was he was supposed to face on that show. Uh, yeah, Simon Diamond versus J- versus uh ver- versus Jay Bradley the Irish or guy. Aiden O'Shea, the, Irish guy. the new Irish guy that they have not debuted yet, and I don't know if they are ever going to debut Aiden O'Shea. Nope. <laughs> I think they've already killed that gimmick. Like, Aiden it's O'Shea doesn't cares. work. It's stupid. <laughs> nobody cares. Nobody, nobody cares. cares. So, let's anyway. get to the impact, actually, this week. Uh, this was actually a pretty good show, but let's start yeah. off. Dixie Carter comes out with the entire TNA roster, and the cap, and the people from Team TNA are in the ring. Every, they're all happy. TNA's been a tight unit. And a family except for one guy, so she calls out Eric Young. And Eric Young reveals, I have an ironclad contract. Oh, God. Just win. Yes. He has the big show contract. Until he Until fails. Lasted, like, which that angle only lasted like three months. 
Yeah, before the if we find out the big show lost money on a strip mall. <laughs> He's hanging out with Michael A. Yeah. So Young says he has connections with GFW and mocks TNA Team TNA's victory. He's like, Yo one, great, I'm still here. So Where else would you be? Nobody could do anything about to me. And Dixie's like, Well, I can, you're gonna fight I can, I can book you against the one legged guy in a lumberjack match. Melendez guy. in a lumberjack match. This match sucked. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. It's, it's Chris Melendez. Come on now. It's Chris Melendez. It maybe he was better on one leg, but this match surely was not that good. And even Eric Minus Young, I think five the, stars. Yeah, there was a lumberjack match and at the end, Eric Young was probably so frustrated with this match that he just started flopping, doing Cohen Shawn Michaels and flopping all over the place. I was going to say, just like, like Shawn Michaels to Hulk Hogan. Yes, he was like, fuck so this. Completely no selling it, overselling no. the offense. Yes, I'll oversell it for you, kid. Okay, you won. At least somebody's here sell- selling. And then, so, then Chris Melendez wins with his missile, one legged missile drop kick. Uh, and cares? apparently the leg was on the line because he gets that back. Apparently. Oh boy. Even though they never mentioned the leg was on the line ever. Yeah. So that was a bunch of shit. What was next? The angle that's hopefully being clutched. Yeah. Little look, see what, yeah, it was absolutely bad. This is on the uh, ballot for a gooker, uh, not a gooker, a uh, production later in the year. Yeah, Pope shows flaw in this company by wondering, is the leg on the line? And then it was, and by the way, weak ass summer wouldn't drop and bubble bomb by him, by Melendez, so just. Yeah. So then we had a dollhouse segment with Taryn calling Jade her favorite, and she he wants Jade to hurt Gail and tells the rest of them, you want to you wanna learn, uh, <laughs> you want to get or earn my favor? Then do your jobs. Yeah. Then we get EC3 backstage telling Jeff says, well, talking to, it's like, Jeff better do his job or he will lo- do, do what he says or he will lose his job. And then we had Franklin talk for whatever reason about the five way. Oh yeah, there was a, there's a five way for later on in the night for yep. the number one contendership to Bound for Glory. I think we completely overshot that, shadowed that. Yeah. So then we have a knockout title match: Kabuki Taker, Gail Kim versus Jade. This is decent. This was actually really good, and uh, let me use a little more time. Yeah, Jade came out alone. Which, considering all the talk Terran just did to them, why? Mm. And during the match, even though this is really good and Jade's trying her best, the commentators are promoting the Bound for Glory knockouts title match as if Jade doesn't even have a fucking chance. She's a jobber. Yes, they're not even basically saying what would happen if Jade wins the belt. No, she it's just... lost by Kong. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's just, oh, it's gonna be Gail Kim versus Kong. There's a knockout side match. Oh, it'll still be Gail Kim versus Kong. It's overlooking the dollhouse. Yep. It's letting the dollhouse attacks after the match. Considering then their then- job was supposed to gain Terrence favor, I think they failed as not helping Jade. Kind of pisses off. And the, last, the remnant of the beautiful people come out. Yep, two of them. The two beautiful we're people who are not pregnant. Tag got bound for glory, and it's still, who would be the third for the beautiful people? I don't know. But, uh, Josh Matthews takes a pot shot at the Divas Revolution, like, this is, you want a revolution? This is a revolution. And I'm like, dude, considering your roster, might not want to bring that up. Kong comes out and stares down Gail Kim to set up that match for Bound for Glory. And then Spud, they ask, he looks ready, and he's like, Jeff, I know last week, I understand last week you punched me, but tonight I'm going to win, whether going to try to win whether you want me to or not. Well, either way, you're not going to win, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> so 
Then we have Ethan Carter the third and Jeff Hardy backstage. And Carter's mm-hmm. like, you better do your job tonight. If I tell you to punch Spud, you will punch Spud. Or you'll be fired. Or you'll be fired. And then we have a match that was great, like most of this show, but didn't mean shit at the end. Because one of them's gone. Kenny King gets the title shot against T. Griuno, even though he hasn't earned it. But he gets and a title shot. It was a good match. Kenny King tried. Yep. Um, funny thing is, the huh. crowd is behind Kenny King. Yep. <laughs> so, T. Griuno retains. It and he'll be defending the X of any title at Bound for Glory in an Ultimate X match. For against three league. people who we don't know. But hmm. considering the roster as it is, I can probably guess who those three people are. Um, Spud, Spud, DJZ, and... TJP? DJZ. No, the other one is TJP. Oh, TJP, yeah, TJ Perkins. Manic, Manic, yeah. I'm guessing those are the three people. Either that or Rockstar Spud gets replaced by Mark Andrews, although they haven't done shit with him. Andrews. (laughs) I'm calling him Mark Andrews. I don't care who TNA calls him. You could also throw Robbie E in there if you wanted to. No. (laughs) <laughs> Don't even give them that idea. <laughs> you know they will. So then we have EC3 defending the belt against Rockstar Spud. Not on the level of some of their previous matches. Not on, not on the level of their English encounter, which really, if you... Uh, but match. this was good. Probably match of the night, I think. Yeah. These two delivered again a really good match. Um, Yeah... The, the first time's always going to be better with these two, with the anticipation and the two actually living up to that anticipation. Right. Um, EC3 has Tyrus heart punch EC, um, has heart yeah. punch Spud, and then he tells Jeff Hardy to end his career with a twist of fate. Well, it's got to be a hell of a twist of fate. Yeah, I agree. And then Spud Did does. Snap Spud in the half Jeff, somehow? Says, Jeff says, no! And he's like, you know what? I'm going to have Tyrus end your career. So Matt comes out. He gets beat up. And then he tells Jeff to punch his brother. And Jeff punches EC3 instead. And Matt kicks Tyrus in the balls. I kind of like the, the build to a possible Hardy versus Tyrus EC3 match if they actually had any scheduled TV after Battle for Glory. Yeah, so EC3's backstage is like, I'm going to fire Jeff Hardy later tonight. So then we have the revolution. Yeah, the revolution is in the ring. Storms like I have lost all humanity. I created the revolution to help the lost and the weak. And said, "There's people that can't get the job done." And calls Shirakoya, and Abyss tells Storm to shut the hell up. I'm a TNA original. I am the TNA original. Yeah. And I'm going to do my own thing from now on, and so, I'm going to kick your ass or something. And he's like, you touch me again, and I will whoop your ass. And he says, I'm dying. Yeah, he leaves, and Je- Storm's like, if you get back here right now. Yeah, because mm. he wanted a th- one-on-three match against Koya, or Mahabali Shira, and he, the Abyss is gone, and then he's like, Koya, get out here! We're going to... and." So Manic gets in the mic and he says, "My na- his name is Maha." Shoves him down. Tell him his name again. Mahabali shoves him again and then finally says, "His name is Mahabali Shira." You didn't make Shira or me. And he tears off the mask and walks away. So Storm tells Manic to get back here. He doesn't. And here comes Shira with his stupid ass dance. And he's like, yeah, you give him independence and he gives us back a stupid dance. Yeah. And he's like, this is doing Alex Wright dance. Let's fight right now. And Storm's like, sure. I fight on my nope. own time. Sorry about your damn luck. Which will be next week. Yeah. Cause that's Storm's last show. <laughs> and we got to yep. s- finish some of this. So then we have Drew Galloway talking to the Wolves and thanking them for their support, and they reveal it's every man for himself, and all bets are off. Yay. 
And then it's time for the Bound for Glory world title shot five-man elimination match. Participants are Bram, Davey Richards, Eddie Edwards, Drew Galloway, and Franklin. And Uh, Hope keeps calling the suplex the souffle. And I swear to God, it got got to a point that I told tweeted Pope himself, a picture of a real souffle. <laughs> and Pope responded. I'm hungry. No, he said a ver- I picked, showed him a picture of a souffle, a chocolate souffle. And he responded and said, a vertical souffle at that. Pope doesn't know what the difference between a souffle no, and a souffle. It, he, he knows what it is. He knows, he knows what he's doing. He's doing it on purpose. He's doing it on purpose. So if you correct him, he will laugh. (laughs) I know what I'm doing. Yay. So seriously, Pope is literally trolling people. Trying, (laughs) literally trolling people. And I had to, I had to laugh at that because it is funny when I show a picture of a souffle and tell him that's a souffle, not what you're saying. He's like, that's a vertical souffle. Boo, that's a terrible <laughs> joke. Well, no, it was funny. It was <laughs> funny to me. But anyway, Wolves use their finisher to eliminate Bram first. Yep. And then the is Wolves... Is this like a battle royal type thing? No. Oh, this was an actual basically... like, pinfall thing? Yeah. Oh. So anyway, the Wolf Wolves have Drew Galloway and Franklin in submission holds. Um, I believe one of them had a... Texas Cloverleaf and the other had a one-legged Boston Crab. And uh, one they Eddie probably each had other, the, Mark, the Achilles tendon lock. Yes, and then they look at each other and they let go of their moves. I am they not lost kidding. Eyes yes, from across the ring. <laughs> so they decide to let go of their submission moves. Even though both men, even the commentators are like, both men are going to tap. So the wolves fight each other. Davey hits an alarm clock, Eddie and Insiguri, and then Lashley spears Davey as Drew hits a future shock DDT on Eddie, and they both get pinned. So yes, the wolves are complete idiots. Yep. And so it's down to Drew and Franklin here. Both men trades clothesline. Lashley winds up the top, stomps Drew in the corner. Drew hits. Lash- Franklin hits Drew with a really s- suplex. Drew dodges the spear and rolls Lashley what up. What do you mean two. a souffle? It's a suplex. I'm not calling it a souffle as much as Pope's going to troll people. I'm going to call it correctly. Mm-hmm. Galloway, and so as. Lashley's getting up from that uh, attempted pit roll-up. Galloway hits him with a running boot and gets the win. Yay. Apparently then, Lashley's going to get a shot at the King of the Mountain title at Bound for Glory. No, yeah, Franklin's going to be facing Brood at Bound for Glory for that belt. This should be fine. Bound for Glory is actually not looking like a bad card right now. <laughs> Except they haven't s- promoted it at all. They're they're like, oh shit, we got yeah, two They, they never left. promote it. We got a pay-per-view coming up. Oh shit, we got two weeks left on our biggest show of the year? Shit, we gotta start That's promoting. Because they made man. the mistake of having a GFW thing. I know. A month, within a month before it. I know. It's a mistake. So, ETH C3 comes out, and he calls Jeff Hardy, which, even yeah. though they've given us no reason to think Jeff needs this job. <laughs> so, Jeff yes, comes out Jeff to Hardy music. certainly has no money. So, Jeff, that comes out to his music and the EC3 stops. And he says, damn it. Personal assistants don't have the music. Uh, I could disagree with that. I'm pretty sure there was a personal assistant who had theme music. So, yeah, bro. so EC, well, it's Deborah. That's different. Mm-hmm. Austin, uh, what are you going to tell Austin? No, she can't have theme music. He wants to beat Damn the it. shit out of her. What do you think he's going to do to you? Damn you, Kevin Dunn. Yeah. Didn't I tell you to shut up? <laughs> so, EC3 set, 
Jeff says that he's going to give Jeff one more chance. Take a knee and say, I, Jeffrey Nero Hardy, apologize for my actions. And please, the, oh, great, pa- the greatest professional wrestler in the world, huh. do not fire me. Huh. Jeff, so Hardy gets on the knee and he says, I, Jeffrey Nero Hardy, Say you cannot fire me because I quit. I quit. And the fans are cheering that he just left this company. The fans are idiots. Yes. They, never, Jeff Hardy. they don't realize what this actually means. They don't comprehend it. So yes, Jeff Hardy has basically done the Hogan thing, which is leave the company and they're happy. He's gone. Yay! Yeah, Bringing down the status quo for wrestling fans. So yes, um, as much as I got to dis, as much as I make fun of the show, it it got a B plus minus. The wrestling was really good. Yes, it was. I'd give it a B minus as well. Best show in a long time, probably in months. God, so yeah, Be- especially through all that GFW bullshit. Yeah. Oh dear God. All those shows and were. Next week, of course, hurt. is the countdown to glory. Yes. And I'm not sure when we'll be on next week. Probably next Sunday. Yeah, the preview maybe. Bound for glory. Yes, to pre- if preview not, bound. We'll be on after Bound for Glory. If both of us, as long as both of us see it. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to see it. I don't know if I'm going to pay money to see that show. No. Because uh, why would you? Even if I don't see it, I'll probably check in results and see if it's any good. Yeah, but, you know, it looks too. like a good car. They just don't promote these shows. I know. And considering you keep get well, finding it's a ways, good card if you don't promote it, you keep finding ways to stay alive. You you None think you ways pro- actually promoting shit? I know. It's just absolutely mind boggling. Oh, what by this- the way, apparently TNA might be going to Netflix. Netflix. That's what somebody was telling me. I'm like, really? Well, that would I actually- did not hear this. Well, that would actually be kind of smart. Problem is, Netflix has their entire ser- season. Nothing, not Netflix. Net what? Nothing, which is New England based. Nesson? Oh, oh! I don't even get that channel. <laughs> yeah, it's North, that's New England based. <laughs> New England Sports Network. Oh you God! Know, a channel that less people get than Destination America. Good job, folks. Oh God. If that happens, I'm not going to be able to talk about this show because it's not on the air. I'm not sure if I have nothing. I live in the Northeast. <sighs> I have to check. Yeah. Anyway, until then, we will talk to you guys next Ooh, week. Do you have anything to sell? We forgot that part. Oh, yes. IWE presents a big TV taping this Saturday night. Or this Saturday afternoon because actually WWE is in town this Saturday night, so they're doing a 4 p.m. bell before WWE, and they're going to have Adam Ricker versus Alexander Lee for the title, and Eric, jo- the Heyman, Eric Johnson, in one of his last matches against Jaka, the Savage, plus the Minutemen, the Influence, um, Crash Landing, the Prime Rank Productions, J.P. O'Reilly, Ap- um, the Bad Boys, and more, and then. Um, I think that's all I've got for right now. You have anything, um, Seth? I it it really looks like I I think it, well it already ended. So uh, the uh, induction Montscrap induction of Bordello of Blood has been posted, and uh, the winning film I think for I've that, seen that one. Oh, you haven't seen Tales from the Crypt Bordello of Blood? I I said I think I have. I've heard oh, yeah. of it. I, even if I Dennis haven't Miller seen it, stars I've heard of it. in it. Yeah, Dennis Miller stars in it. Yeah. Um, and the next induction, which was Rowdy Brody Piper Month for uh, October, is the commercial he did on one of the best of WWF volumes, the Halloween commercial. No, nope. yes. no, nope. that would be, be awesome, though. <laughs> that's wrestle. That's wrestle crap. Um, it's kind of <laughs> close, but we're getting a film from last year that called uh, Pro Wrestlers versus Zombies. The name on the marquee says movie. Yes, pro wrestlers versus zombies. Let me 
tell you who is in this film, besides Piper, of course. Uh, other pro wrestlers in this movie, Shane Douglas, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, oh. Kurt Angle, oh God, Matt Hardy, oh God, Remy Sky. I have no opinion on her. <laughs> and and there are cameos by Kevin Sullivan and SoCal Val, as well as Kevin Sullivan makes sense for some, a movie like this. SoCal is, Val, though, yes, as an, a ring announcer. I'm my dungeon of doom. Basically, the whole intro is for a wrestling show where Shane Douglas kills a guy in the ring by Jesus. with a tombstone pile driver. Breaks a man's neck and kills him. Uh, oh, another man who is in this. Make, if that doesn't make you want to watch it. Sylvester Turkai. Oh, God. Ryan Mitchell. Who? A wrestler named Ryan Mitchell. Never heard of him. So, yeah. This I'm sure movie. Is certainly taken off after this movie. Yes. This movie <laughs> exists. This exists, man. I, I, I don't know what to say. And it's. It's um, th- d- distributed by Troma uh, Entertainment. You might remember them for Toxic Avenger. The one that Blade uh, Braxton was in? The, the Blade Braxton uh, film. Yes, Blade Braxton loves that company. Yes, they released this film. It's their distribution. So, yeah, <laughs> this film exists. Yeah. I swear to God, I saw it yesterday. Mm, I'm going to have to maybe look, try to see if I can find it. It's if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can get it for cheap free. I think I don't. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, an instant video for free. You can get it on. Just it probably if you don't, I think it's going to cost like two bucks or something. At three three bucks, that's it. But yeah, it that's is. All you can sell it for. <laughs> it is absolutely bad, and I have to wait for the DVD coming in October <laughs> because I need the DVD to. Review, induct these movies. Uh, God. God anyway. Is, good luck with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, Miley, it is time for a walk. We out. <laughs>